Hi, my name is Annabel Alarcon, High Speed Broke the Specialist at Expo. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure and run a simple Etherbird test. Now let's check out the equipment I will be using for this video. First, an FTB2 Pro, that is a Windows platform. Next, the, the module FTBX8A200 NG, that is our 100 gig module. This one includes two ports, one QSFP and one CFP4. Also, we're going to be using a QSFP 28 CLR4, as you can see here, for the uh, green plastic strap. A CFP4, uh, a transceiver CFP4, and a fiber loop. Now, let's go to the GUI. The first step is to open Toolbox. Next, start the 88200 NGE module clicking on the Power Blazer icon. This may take a few seconds, so please wait until, until the initialization window finishes. Select the menu at the top called Test Application, and in the Ethernet area, click on the Etherbird icon. To configure the Etherbird parameters, select the tab Test Configurator. The first step is to select the port we will be using for testing, clicking on the button Modify Structure. In there, we can select the interface we will be using, the type of connector, the type of framing, could be Layer 2 or Layer 3, and also the file type. The Etherbird page displays three blocks. The first block is uh, the interface block, and this one provides information about the physical port, uh, about the status of the laser, the RX and TX power, optical power received, the IP address of the interface, and the link status. We can expand this uh, block pushing at the top, uh, clicking at the, at the top of the window, or over the plus sign. In this window, we could enable or disable the RSFEC, as, as you can see in the checkbox at the top. After we do it, the status of the lanes also change. We can review the optical power per lane. We also could check the frequency per lane. And we have an extra tab that gives you the all information about the transceiver, in this case the QSFP. The next block is the MAC layer block that provides information about the MAC address in the or, uh, source port and also in the destination one. To expand this block, we can click at the top and get the following window. In there, we could select the source MAC address field to modify the, IP, the MAC address on the destination area only, not on the source, on the destination area. Also, we can click on the Modify Frame Structure button that will allow us to select different values like encapsulation, uh, frame format, network layer, and also, uh, if needed, we could add a VLAN tag that we could use uh, one or even uh, go up to three. In this case, uh, as you can see in the example, we select just one. And after selecting it in the, in the, in the block, we can see the VLAN uh, tab, where we could select the specific VLAN we want to inject the traffic. Finally, the bare block shows the pattern being used in TX, in RX, and also the status for the SDT and the TX rate that the uh, test is, is going to be sending. To expand this block, we could click at the top or in the plus sign to uh, configure the next parameters on the following window. In the next window, we can identify first the TX and RX pattern. We can also uh, modify the BERT uh, part parameters. We could modify the BERT threshold in case of need. 
we could uh, modify the service disruption parameters, including a service disruption uh, threshold. We can uh, modify also uh, the frame size if needed, being the minimum 64. And also we could modify the percentage of traffic being sent in case we would like to saturate the link or not. Once all the parameters are configured, user can start the test selecting the green start button on the right hand of the screen. The next window is the results window. The first tab at the top is the results page. On the results page is summary. In there we get statistics about alarms and errors associated with, bit, uh, with the bird test, also related to service disruption, like longest and shortest uh, time. We also get the bit error rate part, where we can add a bird threshold, or including, we could, uh, the user could inject bit errors in a manual or rate uh, way, just selecting on the list and then uh, clicking the amount of errors and then uh, clicking the inject button. So the next step at the top of the screen is alarms and errors. In, there, in that window, the user can find more specific information about the alarms. The, per the first part is the interface part, where the interface part can also be expanded clicking on the blue area and the plus sign for more specific details. The next area on the screen is the bird uh, statistics, where we can get more information about the bird uh, testing. Also at the top, we have the ether ethernet part, where we can get statistics about the ethernet uh, area. And at the end, we have the PCS lane area that we can expand to and uh, get more details related to the errors per lane. Going back to alarm error window, at the bottom we can see the the bit uh, the uh, injection area where we could inject different types of errors. We have available in the list uh, errors related to interface, Ethernet, PCS lane. Also, we could select the type. It could be alarms or errors depending to what the user is uh, the user needs. We have the inject button that as soon as we click it, the errors will be injected and it changes to a green color while it's injecting. Uh, when it stops, it, it changes the color and in the alarms where we got a, a hit, for example, parameter pattern loss in this case, we get an orange uh, yellow box that indicates there are historical errors in this, in this part of the alarms. And then we move on to the traffic uh, tab at the top and in there we get information about the traffic being received and injected, also the type of frames we are receiving and sending and also the frame size that we, we are receiving. When the test finishes, a complete report can be saved including all the results from the test. To create it, the user has to only click on the yes button after the test finishes. Make sure that the name of the file is correct. We can even modify that on clicking the auto-generate file name. Uh, after that, click on the save report button. The report is being uh, created after that and it's ready for the user to, to export it and use it.